So in today's video, I am going to be doing the very basic first step of decorating a cake and putting icing on it. Now, obviously the cake has been baked. This is a 12 inch square chocolate cake. Um, there will be another layer on top. So it's a two layer, 12 inch square chocolate. There's just gonna be white vanilla buttercream as their filling. They do not want any kind of ganache or fruit filling. So that'll be the filling. And then I'm gonna put a crumb coat on it and then I'm just gonna let it sit and settle. And the reason I do that is because when something has been chilled, and this has been chilled, it's not frozen, but it has been chilled just to eliminate some of the crumbs when I put the crumb coat on, because chocolate, as we all know, is the worst for crumbs. Um, but I do I do that on all of my flavored cakes. No matter if it's you know white, funfetti, lemon, raspberry, whatever, I do a crumb coat. But the chocolate especially, and the red velvet especially. So anyway, I'm gonna do a thin crumb coat, and then I'm gonna let it sit here for a while. Um, you could pop it back in the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes, but I wouldn't do much more than that. In the past, I have. In the past, I've been like, okay, I need to get all these cakes crumb coated before I do A, B, and C, whatever it may be. Um, so I would crumb coat all these cakes and pop them in the fridge. They look so perfect when they come out. But as I noticed, is as they come to room temperature, they settle. And you'll see like air bubbles come on the icing or worst case scenario is that if the cake is like really cold, like frozen, you'll get a crack in your icing as it becomes room temperature. And you just really don't want it to not sink, but sort of, I mean, it just settles on itself um, as it becomes room temperature. So we're gonna let this settle with the crumb coat. Um, this crumb coat's not really thick. You're not gonna have to go back and scrape any icing off. And again, this is not frozen solid. I just, uh, I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but I can push on it. It's, it's, it's really cold, but not frozen solid. So you could put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes to get that covered in plastic wrap completely, or you put it in the refrigerator for a little bit longer, again, covered in plastic wrap. So I have got a serrated knife. I'm just going around the edges and I am just kind of making sure, you know, if it sticks to the pan at all or over, not overflows a lot, but you know, a little bit comes over the edge of the pan, you'll get that little crusty part. I kind of cut those off. This is like, again, a 12 inch square. I have it on a half sheet board. You could put it on a 14 inch square board if you wanted to. I've got some simple syrup. Whether you choose to use that is your complete choice. I'm gonna put a little bit here. I don't go overboard on the simple syrup. It's just a little bit because most cakes that I make are not eaten till the next day. Um, here where I live in Kentucky, it is 9.30 p.m. So they're not picking this up until about eight o'clock in the morning. Actually, my husband's delivering it for me. So I knew I had to get it done tonight because I'm not an early bird person. I will not get up at, you know, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning to decorate a cake. Um, if I am awake at that time, you don't want to see me or talk to me. So this is what I generally do. And that's not everybody's jam. If you prefer to get up early and do it, that's totally fine. I prefer to do it late the night before because I'm much better late in the evening than I am early in the morning. So there is that. And I let this simple syrup kind of soak in while I grab the other layer. And as you can see, it's completely covered in plastic wrap. That's how this one was before I put it on the, on the uh, board. So I'm gonna flip it over, because I've, I've wrapped mine really well. And I'm gonna undo it. Each cake will have about two to three layers of plastic wrap on it. Flip it to get this off. And there's one more. And I buy these really large rolls of plastic wrap at my Sam's Club. I'm sure you can get it at Costco. I'm sure you can order online, but it makes a really big difference when it's these larger tiered cakes. Okay, so this is unwrapped. Throw this away. So now that this has had just a minute or two, it doesn't take long to soak in. I've got vanilla buttercream here in this bucket that I made this morning. I'm just gonna use my cake spatula. Now, some people pipe on their fillings. Again, Totally fine. Not everybody does it the same way. This is how I learned to do it back in the day. And so this is how I still do it. And on a square cake, it's a little bit trickier in my opinion because you keep, on a round cake, I would just kind of spread it out and I'm done. And on the square cake, you really wanna make sure you get some in the corners so that your corners don't droop. Um, if you don't have any icing between this corner um, of your two layers, then when you go put the outside icing on, if it's too heavy, you could cause your corners to not to break off, but just to droop a little bit, and you don't want that. You want a nice sharp edge if you can get it. So I'm just gonna spread this out. And when I'm spreading, 
my actual cake spatula is never touching the cake. It is only touching icing because the minute it touches icing, crumbs are gonna come up and you're not gonna be able to get the crumbs off your knife. It's gonna cause the icing to pull away. It's the worst thing ever. So I keep pulling from the piles of icing where it's piled up and taking to the areas that I want it. And as you can see, I'm putting a pile in that corner. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more. Before I get just empty this bucket, I've got another one on standby over here. take this here also on this corner make sure I pull from the center so you don't get a pile in the center as well okay I think I'm gonna put a little bit more around the edge so it, again it doesn't get that droopy look on the corners so I'm gonna pop this new bucket open I'm just gonna put a little bit on the edges. Because if a little bit seeps out, that's okay. You can use it to help you with your crumb coat. Okay, so I think that's good. Now, if you were making this into a tiered cake for a wedding or a large birthday or event, I would say get out your level at this point and level this filling to make sure you don't have any bumps and bulges that are going to cause the next layer to be off and not lay level. Since this is a single tier cake, I'm not super worried about it. I can eyeball it to see, hey, is this level, is it not? And so what I do to do that is I just kind of get down on my level and I turn it and I just kind of make sure there's no big sides that are sticking up too far. And I think we're good. So. Here's the step that bothers people, it freaks them out when it's a large cake like this, is that taking this and putting it on here. And I'm not gonna lie, it can be tricky. So I hope this does not break while I'm filming. So as you can tell, I still got this last piece of plastic underneath. The problem is the underneath, which is the cut side, which is like basically the top part of the cake that was in the pan. This is the, this bottom here is what I call the bottom, is actually what was against the bottom of the cake pan. So when I flip this, I can't just flip it like this because the cut side would be facing up, which is a lot harder to ice because there's more crumbs. So what I really want is this bottom against the plastic wrap to be facing down on this filling. So I've got to manage to get this up here and get the plastic wrap out as well. It's a conundrum. So what I do is I use the plastic wrap to say I'm lifting it a little bit to get it up in my hands. So I've got it like this. And there's not much plastic wrap on this side here. So I'm actually gonna take my thumb and I'm pulling that away as I'm laying it on the other cake. And I kind of lay it down and pull the plastic out at the same time. Now, I hope you know that you could actually see that I was doing. It's kind of something you can't really do super slow or you'll mess it up. So let me, and then I kind of go push it around, make sure there's not like one side that's like hanging over much more than the other. I check that. I think we're okay. Again, I get eye level again. See how we're looking. This corner to me already looks like it's a little droopy and it could just be the way it baked. So what I do before I put the crumb coat on is I get a little bit of icing on the end of my spatula and pile it in there. Just to make sure that corner is not gonna be droopy. So um, check the other edges. This one is not droopy, but it could use a little bit more icing. So I'm gonna pile that in. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna go rinse my hands off because that's the problem with touching these cakes that have been wrapped like that. They're very, very soft and moist, which is fantastic, but the chocolate gets on your hands. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, also wanted to mention, since this, I mean, this has only been out of the refrigerator for 15 minutes or so, but it's already a lot softer than it was when I took it out. So if I start to crumb coat this and I feel like it's being too difficult, crumbs are coming off in big chunks or my icing won't stick to it, 
then I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator just like this without a crumb coat because it will help to dry out. Don't worry, your cake won't dry out. But just this outer layer where it's sticky or too soft or however you wanna call it, make it much easier to crumb coat. So let's test it out and see. And you actually can see I've already got some crumbs on here and that's just from doing these corners. So I'm gonna use this bucket that I'm done with now to scrape this spatula because I don't wanna get those chocolate crumbs back into my clean batch of icing. So. And again, I'm a spatula girl. Some people pipe on their icing, and it also depends uh, a little bit on what type of icing you're using. I'm using a crusting buttercream, and I make mine kind of thick uh, just because it sets up faster and decorates better, in my opinion. But that is a personal preference. So if that is too hard for you to work with, because a lot of people think my icing is too stiff to spread, because I've been, but I've been doing it for almost 18 years um, like this, so my hands and arms are used to it. So if your icing's a little softer, it may be easier for you to crumb coat it. Mine wore it because it's so stiff and the cake is so soft. Sometimes it's a bad combination, so I have to be a little bit careful. But it also makes it harder for me to pipe it on with a large uh, piping bag. That's why I don't do that. That's why I use an icing spatula. Okay, so I'm gonna try to turn a little bit so you can see better. Let me get on this side of the camera because I'm right-handed and you're gonna wanna see, you're gonna wanna see this angle more. So I'm gonna start with one corner and bring it over. And as you can see, I've got it piled on. I hold you my angled spatula with the angle facing the cake like this. And I'll zoom in on that so you can see. See how the angle is facing away from me towards the cake. And I've got it about as tall as the cake piled on there. So I'm just gonna press it to it, but I'm not gonna spread it too far. I'm not, see I kept it on there kind of thick. Cause you can go back with your icing um, scraper and scrape that off the excess, but that keeps my spatula clean so I can continue to dip back in that clean bucket. Get about the same amount again. So far, so good on it not sticking too bad. So you can already see a crumb coming through there, but it's not on my spatula, so I know it's okay. Now, I have the technique I teach a lot when I'm teaching someone in person is to, because a lot of times this is too much for them to hold on their spatula at once if they're not used to it, is to just pile the icing on the bottom half, which comes about halfway up your cake, and then go back and do the top half. So I'll show you that on the next side. So this is basically done this side. So let's just put about half a spatula. Again, same method, but I'm pretty much just covering from the filling down. Now see on a corner here, I'm gonna grab where I stopped before and pull that over. It's gonna, it's gonna make those two sides kind of stick together and create a seam. And do the same thing all around. Okay, now well, let's go back and do the top half. Same idea. And I'm starting to get a little bit of crumbs here, but not so much that it's in the bucket, so that's good. Pull this around here to combine those two seams. Okay, we're good. It's also really nice to, it's okay if your icing comes up a little higher. And actually when you go do the final coat of icing, I actually prefer the icing to stand up taller. It gives you a nice crisp, crisp edge. But on a crumb coat, it's whatever works for you. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to doing a little taller because that's what I'm used to. But you do whatever works for you. Like I said, if you want to, even if you're using a crusting buttercream, but you don't like it as thick as mine, it, did you see that icing just fall on the floor? Icing a cake is not always an attractive process. It can be quite messy. As any of you who have done it know, after seeing all the dishes that are dirtied after baking and icing a cake. All right, we're almost done with all the four sides. Pull this around. I'm just throwing icing all over the floor. The icing bucket's a little further away than I'm used to since I'm recording, so bear with me. Oh, there went another one. And I know this looks like a lot of icing. Don't worry. We're going to scrape a lot of this off. Now, I will say for years and years and years, I did not even do a crumb coat. Um, I worked, I taught myself at home and then I worked for someone else at a catering place and did their wedding cakes and birthday cakes and we just had so many cakes to do I didn't have time to crumb coat. 
now I do, and I do see the benefits of it now. So, okay, so we've got the sides done. We're gonna go back in, put some on top, like we did for the filling. And we're just gonna spread that out. Again, trying hard not to touch the cake too much so we don't get crumbs all of our spatula. And I'm going to pull those edges in like that, and it kind of gives you a nice edge. It's going to give you a preview to the, what the final product will look like. And this cake is actually going to be iced. I think it's, I'll look back at my order form, but I think it's a an aqua, like a teal type color that we'll be icing it in. I like to crumb coat it in white. I don't feel like anybody needs to eat more food coloring than they would like. Okay. Obviously, this is not perfect. We're going to now get, a, I'm going to use a plastic scraper um, and scrape the crumb coat. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my clean bucket to scrape it into, but if I find any crumbs, I'll go to the empty bucket and use that. First, I just pull my scraper across the bottom, grab those extra pieces of icing that may be stuck to the board. And keep in mind, when you're doing a crumb coat or a final coat of icing, when it's crusting buttercream, it crusts fairly quickly. You don't want to get all the icing on there and then walk away and come back in 10 minutes to try to scrape it off. It'll be too crusted by then and you won't get a smooth finish. So always immediately go back and scrape. And if you're doing the textured icing, like putting using a comb on your cake or just using your cake spatula, Whatever you might be using, you have to do that while it's soft. You cannot wait for it to crust if you're using a crusting buttercream. Now, if you're going to pipe on top of it, doesn't matter. But if you're going to texture or smooth out the buttercream, you have to do it before it crusts. Now, normally on a round cake, you would just continue to pull around and around while turning your turntable, while spinning it, but obviously with square. We don't want to do that. So I'm just doing each side separately, making sure not to pull too much from that corner because so that it remains nice and sharp. And again, a lot of your crumb coats might be much less icing than this, and that's okay. But on a chocolate cake, I prefer a decent thickness of crumb coat to keep the crumbs out. Okay. All right, so that's the size for the crumb coat. And if it was a smooth coat, that might spend a little bit more time, but the final coat, but this is just the crumb coat. So now we're gonna pull from that top edge, but we're not gonna pull over the edge. We're not gonna start pulling from back here. We're gonna pull on like on the top of the edge, if that makes any sense, so that we don't collapse it and lose that sharpness. And you're, again, you're just gonna start and stop after each scrape. Clean it off in your bucket. I can already feel there's some unlevelness in the middle. Like I think I have too much icing on one side and you can feel it when you pull the scraper across. So I'll have to play with that here in a minute. Okay. So let me get down here and look and see what I'm feeling. Yes, there's definitely a little higher here and I can already see because there's a lot more here than here and the whole thing touched the cake so it definitely is too high at that point.
Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. If I can get this little bit, I just kind of pushed them off the edge when I was trying to level it out. So I'm gonna clean that up. And right now I'm just barely pulling this across to get that edge piece. I'm not really pressing down my scraper at all. Okay. I feel like this is good enough for the crumb coat. Not perfect, but it has its nice edges for each corner. Yeah, I think we're good.